Good morning, everyone. I'm Chancellor Alexander Cartwright, and it's so great to have all of you here this morning. And thank you to Dean Le Elizabeth Leboa and our College of Engineering for helping us celebrate this amazing moment. Today is a special day. We have a tremendous opportunity to celebrate our extraordinary alumni and to take another remarkable step forward in the future of healthcare. Mike and Millie Brown are extraordinary supporters of Mizzou and true stewards of public service. In 1979, Mike earned his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from MU. He later went on to co-found Euronet Worldwide with his brother-in-law and fellow MU alum, Dan Henry. Since the beginning of Euronet Worldwide, Mike has served as chairman, president, and CEO, helping grow the company into one of the world's top organizations for electronic funds transfers and payments. Clearly, Mike is a tremendous leader. He has been named UMKC's Regional Entrepreneur of the Year, a member of the KC100, and a member of the Entrepreneurial Hall of Fame at UMKC's Block School of Management, along with many other honors. Throughout their lives, Mike and Millie have both continued to give back to Mizzou. Mike is a member of the Mizzou Our Time to Lead Campaign Cabinet, as well as a member of the College of Engineering Dean's Strategic Advisory Board, which Dean Laboa will talk about more in a, in a little in a moment. And Millie serves on the served on the Sinclair School of Nursing's Campaign Executive Board. I have seen so many ways that Mike and Millie have brought value to our university and community over the years and helped us change lives around the world. So it was no surprise that they recognized the impact of our next-gen Precision Health Institute back when we were just dreaming about this project. They understood the path-breaking potential of next-gen, and they saw all the ways it will elevate the excellence of Mizzou. Their extraordinary commitment today is a testament to that. I am thrilled to announce that Mike and Millie Brown are committing $2 million to the Next Gen Precision Health Institute. <laughs> Their remarkable gift will help support the Institute through its completion, which is on track for 2021. And this amazing facility will be a hub for innovation that will enable our faculty, staff, students, and industry partners to provide world-class health care to people everywhere. As we like to say, this will allow us to take health care to every Missourian. But Mike and Millie also recognize that the value of NextGen to Missouri and beyond is about much more than the building. And we are so honored to have them as partners in this revolutionary vision. Unfortunately, Millie could not, be, could not join us today, but please join me in thanking the Browns for their tremendous vision and generosity. <laughs> Mike, I want you to know that we are so proud to have you and Millie both in the Mizzou family. Thank you again for helping us take the life-changing potential of NextGen from a dream to a reality. And now I am pleased to welcome up Dean Elizabeth Laboa to say a few words. Dean Laboa. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chancellor Cartwright. Um, I have to say, I, I have some words here. I'm so excited, um, but the whole time I'm listening to the Chancellor speak up here this morning, and he, had, he was speaking last night at an event last night. I think you're the first one. We got to get you into some, get, get, the, get you taken care of, Chancellor. You got a really bad cold. This poor man. Uh, so this is truly an exciting day for the University of Missouri, for our College of Engineering, and for the future of healthcare in Missouri and beyond. 
A few years ago, the National Cancer Institute initiated a cancer moonshot to accelerate research into treatments and to improve detection and prevention of cancer. You can think of, and I like to think of, the Next Gen Precision Health Initiative and our institute as the Apollo stage of that moonshot. I believe this will be the effort that gets us to that place others have only dreamed about. Better diagnoses, better therapies, life-changing treatments and technologies addressing cancer and other life-threatening diseases. And just like the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation in St. Louis played a key role in the original moonshot, the University of Missouri is leading the way in this latest effort to expand our frontiers of knowledge. Thanks to the generosity of Mike and Millie Brown, we are one giant leap closer to achieving that goal. As the chancellor mentioned, Mike Brown, of course, graduated from our College of Engineering, uh, and that was in 1979 with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. That same year, he founded Innovative Software, which merged with Informix in 1988. By the time Mike left the, the company in 1990, annual revenues had grown from $70 million to $170 million. His leadership then and now has a major impact. Euronet, the company Mike co-founded, saw a 27% increase in earnings per share last year, which was the seventh consecutive year of double-digit growth in earnings per share. Mike's leadership then, his leadership now, continues to have an incredible impact. In 1997, while he was leading Euronet to new heights, Mike earned his master's degree in molecular and cellular biology at UMKC. So remember, he got his degree here from Mizzou in electrical engineering. While he's doing all of this incredible, entrepreneurial, innovative, game-changing research and, and, uh, and driving new industry technologies, he's also expanding his education and uh, weaving together his love of engineering with his interest in biology, which uh, I, I greatly, uh, 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 boy, why can't I find the word to that? I always go, I, 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 Mike and I are very similar in that, in that love of engineering and biology together. Mike's degrees in engineering and biology represent the type of interdisciplinary cross-pollination that lies at the heart of the Next Gen Precision Health Institute. I know I've said it so many times, many of you have heard me say, innovation lies at the intersections. Mizzou has the capability to do this in a way no one else and no other place can. Our interdisciplinary strengths and our intersections are where amazing innovations are going to occur. And as the Chancellor mentioned, Mike also serves on my College of Engineering Strategic Advisory Board, sharing his industry expertise for the benefit of our college, our faculty, and our students. And this board worked with me to prioritize the initiatives of the college, beginning with the Translational Precision Medicine Complex, which Mike is thrilled we now call the Next Gen Precision Health Institute. The number of times this man has teased me about T-P-M-R-C-Q-T-Z, you need a better name. Uh, so yes, now we, uh, he's very thrilled we have this as the next gen. While we are still developing the next gen institute and dreaming of its transformative power, Mike and Millie were very generous with their time and expertise. Now they're helping us to take our research, treatment, and healthcare innovations to the next level. When completed, the next gen institute will be a world class interdisciplinary research and teaching facility fueled by collaboration and entrepreneurship. It will help us leverage the combined resources of the College of Engineering, of course, but also the School of Medicine, our research reactor, veterinary medicine, the College of Arts and Sciences, and, the and, and frankly, as this initiative and institute has garnered so much excitement across campus, every college and school is playing such a critical role in, in the transformative uh, impact that we're thinking about what we can do here. It will help us pioneer the future of healthcare, finding solutions to the grand challenges facing Missouri, the country, and the world. Thank you so much to the Browns and the hard work of so many across our campus and throughout the UM system. 
The life-changing potential of next gen is no longer in the realm of science fiction like the moonshot and, now, and our cancer moonshot. It's on the launch pad. The clock is ticking down to October of 2021. And thank you again for the incredible generosity of Mike and Millie Brown. We'll soon be on our way exploring the frontiers of science and medicine and improving the lives of people everywhere. It is now my very great pleasure to introduce to you someone who is making an incredible impact on the University of Missouri uh, and on the health of our citizens, Mike Brown. Uh, thank you, uh, Dean and Chancellor. Uh, both of you, uh, thank you from both myself and my wife, Millie. You know, uh, about two years ago, we gave a similar gift to this to the college, the Sinclair College of Nursing, because we believe that healthcare, you've got to span, you've got to discover new ways to do better healthcare, plus you've got to be able to administer that. And having one of the very best uh, nursing schools in the country at this university, we felt it was important that it uh, upgrade and change and allow more and more people to be educated. Because to be a nurse now, it's not just caring for people. There's a lot of technology. You've got to learn these kinds of uh, you know new methodologies, new equipment, and so forth. And it kind of follows along the same path. But when it comes to the engineering building, this next gen building, which I'm Thank God it's got a new name now. Um, I, I just like to paint a picture for you, a pay, paint a picture of the future. And it's not a picture for your kids or your grandkids like these futurists do. This is one for you. This is, we'll just call it the next 10 to 15 years where whole industries are going to upheave. They're in the middle of this now or in the beginning stages of this now. Think about the industries of trucking and taxis and cars. They're all gonna be self-driving. Your kids or your grandkids may never need a driver's license because you just tell your car where to go. And this is not science fiction. This is happening right now. You've got Google and you've got Uber and you've got all these guys investing billions and billions in the technology for cars to drive around uh, without a driver safely. This is gonna change. Space flight, look at this. I mean, you talk about Apollo, I hate to tell you, that's 60 year old technology. But, uh, but you know, where, where you've got people like SpaceX who land two boosters simultaneously, they look like two pencils that land on their erasers. I mean, to pull that off is huge, a huge technology advantage that we have in this country that nobody else has. Entertainment, entertainment's changing with equal, you know, uh, acceleration and velocity. You've got <clears throat> virtual reality, you've got augmented reality and all those other kind of whatever they are realities. Uh, medicine, medicine's gonna change tremendously. They're gonna have, we talk about medicine changing from general to individualized, personalized, precision medicine just for you to cure your disease based upon what's going on in your body. Bioelectronics are becoming more and more advanced and connecting your nerves to mechanical systems to be able to give you movement and, and things when, you have, uh, when there are problems. And you've got the big thing that's coming is, is artificial intelligence diagnostics. I mean, you're only as good as the, as the physician who, who prescribes uh, a treatment for you. Well, this, no matter how good this doctor is, he's only seen n number of cases in his life. What if you put all those cases in a big database and you actually understand the best mo modalities for, for uh, treatment and so forth. All this is gonna change and it's gonna change in the next 10 years. I mean, we're not talking like we gotta die first. You know, this isn't for our, our kids. We will be there. Now there's a couple fossils out there like me, but, um, but we will be here for this, okay? And technology is going to be absolutely at the core. But the question I'm asking each of you today 
is do you want Missouri, do you want the University of Missouri here at Mizzou to invent and discover these building blocks of this upheaval? Or do you just want to be a consumer? That's the question. That's why you must invest. Either we're just going to pay for it, or maybe we'll invent it. And I think the, the monetary advantages, the economic advantages, the, uh, the pride advantages of inventing are a lot stronger than just consuming. So this concept of next gen, by the way, isn't new. <clears throat> Uh, I read a great book, and this great book was called The Idea Factory, and it was based, it was uh, the, the history of Bell Labs. Bell Labs, as you might remember, you know, was a creation of AT&T back when it was a monolith, and, and it basically controlled most all the telecom in the country. But it started way back in the late 30s and the early 40s, and the number of patents and discoveries were by the tens of thousands, everything from microwave communication to sonar to radar, the invention of the transistor, all these things came out of Bell Labs. And the interesting thing about Bell Labs is it was created just like NextGen is envisioned. What they actually had was kind of like uh, their campus was a star, we're in the center, and then it had different five buildings, kind of building groups all come off of it, but it wasn't a center for engineers. There were engineers, there were material scientists, there were biologists, there were all these guys together, mostly guys, but now it's guys and girls. Uh, they were all together and they'd meet at the water cooler and they'd discuss ideas and what they found is when they collaborated, that's where the discoveries happened. What we're finding right now is the complexity of the discoveries required for our future are no longer siloed within biology or electrical engineering or computer engineering. You have to kind of mix and match all of these. That's why next gen is so, so important. We need to be a participant here at the University of Missouri. I am hoping that this building is not the last building, that this is the first of many along the same lines because this is exactly how we will advance as a country, as a state, as a university. So I'm actually on the board of another similar organization like NextGen up at Northwestern University. And I've been on this since it was envisioned 10 years ago by another University of Missouri graduate who's now a PhD in chemistry up there. And it does very, you know, very similar things to what we expect NextGen to do. But it's interesting, now after watching this for 10 years, where does all the money come from to fund these things on an ongoing basis? It all basically comes from grants. Either grants from private industry, which are a tiny bit, most of the grants come from the government, from the National Institutes of Health, from the National Science Foundation, and so forth. It is interesting, this, this CLP, the uh, uh, Center for Life Processes, they get more and more grants and they beat out all these highfalutin East Coast kind of universities because of this collaboration. Everybody understands now that when you collaborate, you're gonna have more beneficial outcomes. So they're winning grants. And I would like the University of Missouri to do the same thing, to have millions and millions of dollars come in from the government to fund the discoveries which will change the world and change and enhance our reputation as a university. You know, I did build two companies. Both of them are high-tech companies. And I'm telling you, it was just a real challenge to find enough highly trained, qualified employees to push us forward because our universities in the Midwest were weaker than they are on, the, on some of the coasts, okay? So this is why I've been interested in this for a long, long time. This is the kind of, this next-gen platform is the kind of place that will attract the world's best. And that's what we want. When you have the world's best, you get the best discoveries, you can make a real big difference. So I guess you can say from Millie and my perspective, we're really happy to be a small part of what's going on, a small part of the catalyst that will move this uh, university forward. This is very exciting for me and very exciting, I think, for all of you. Thank you very much.
Amazing. That's why I always contend our Mizzou alums are smarter than everyone else. And I know we spent some resources on marketing about why the impact of next gen, but I'm looking back at my colleague Ashley Burden and Cameron and making sure we got this on video because this is the best commercial slash endorsement that I've heard, Mike. And I'm really thrilled and appreciative that not only would you share your resources, but your leadership and your time, and it's, it's remarkable. And I want to tell just a real quick story on Mike, though, because you heard his brilliance and the fact that he built these companies and employs all these people all over the world. He just told me this morning he has 300 people in Poland. Um, but I did want to share that his company is unique. I, I happened to visit him one time on Halloween, not thinking much about it, and turns out Mike greeted me in a, I think you were in a witch suit or some kind of goblin suit of some sort. Uh, and then he proceeded to take me around to his whole company, which is decked out in Halloween. Kids are there, families are there. And it just showed me, you know, not only was he a successful businessman, C CEO, but he built a culture at his company that has been remarkable and one of the most successful in the country. So. Mike, thank you for everything you've done. Um, and I just want to close with a couple of comments about our campaign and then relate back to Next Gen. Our goal with the campaign was to make Mizzou a destination university for top students and faculty, and we had to accomplish this with a focus on four priorities. Number one, endowment. Uh, so our endowment now has grown from, really doubled from 600 million to 1.2 billion. And that allows us to recruit and retain quality faculty and students. And it's an amazing accomplishment by our alums and um, our team. Second priority was signature centers and institutes like the Kinder Institute, which now has a $35 million endowment to study constitutional democracy so that if you want to study constitutional democracy or teach it, you need to come to Mizzou. And that's really the purpose of our seven signature centers that we have now with endowments of over $10 million. A third priority was campus renaissance. And so um, Mike mentioned the nursing building, which is now with the catalyst of Mike and Millie's gift, is now underway with a uh, total new uh, construction project. And again, around the concept that world-class teachers, world-class researchers should have world-class space to teach and and uh, do their research. And then finally, Chancellor Cartwright added student success to our four, uh, three earlier priorities. And millions of dollars have been given to scholarships, graduate assistantships, study abroad, and those are the things that have really made an impact. As we say, everybody's for more money, but when you look at the impact, that's when people really see the uh, opportunities for students now and 100 years from now. So I want to just close by reiterating what Mike said about next gen. The things that have resonated, uh, both the dean, the chancellor, and Mike talked about, about next gen with the folks that we talk about, and it's the top priority for the system and the university, are that, you know, number one, we want to help cure cancer, as the dean said. We've got abilities and, and certain uh, criteria with drugs that are being uh, distributed every month that now we are a part of that equation. And this facility is about that and creating world-class research opportunities. So that's number one on the list. We want to change that dynamic and be a part of that play, as Mike said, to be part of the inventions, not just the consumers. Number two, it's had a huge economic development impact. And so $220 million in construction and equipment is a big impact anywhere in the country. But if you combine that with the millions of dollars of grant money that will be coming through that Mike alluded to, and then on top of that, the innovation wing that we're going to be able to spin off companies, create patent revenue, there's a huge economic development impact, not only in the state of Missouri, but in the country. And then finally, as the chancellor likes to say, this is also something that will help the prestige of Mizzou, help our AU status, and that's a means to an end. And so for those three reasons, this is the top priority for us. And we just are incredibly appreciative of our donors and particularly Mike and Millie. So please help me one more time in thanking Mike and Millie as for their incredible generous gift for Next Gen.
And we'll stay around as long as you want to answer any questions from the media and others. And I think there's some refreshments in the back. So, M-I-Z, thank you all.